came up to me and he said, you know something? 40 years in the gospel. 40 years I accepted Christ to go. 40 years I've gone to church. 40 years I've gone to Sunday school. And he said, you know something? I've never really reached one soul for Jesus. I'm going to ask you a question. Don't answer it out loud. How many souls have you reached for Christ since you've been born again? You see, we've got to ask ourselves these questions. Because if not, then we're just going to always walk around thinking that everything is good. And everything is good in the aspect of going to be with Christ. But you aren't saved to go to heaven. Oh, let me say that one more time. I'm messing with the religious minds here. You have not been saved to go to heaven. If you were saved to go to heaven, then when you confess Christ as your Savior, you would have been dead or raptured at that very moment. You are saved because God has called you. God has ordained you. God has picked you. God has put within you fearfully and wonderfully made you so that your personality is going to reach a people group on this planet. You weren't born a thousand years ago. You weren't born a hundred years ago. You weren't born a hundred years ago. You were born for this time and in this season at this moment. And if you and I don't do our jobs individually and corporately, then we're just another little church on another little corner. And I don't know about you, I'm sick and tired of those. I'll close this before we ever become that. Say amen. Oh, and you don't have to question whether I would do that. I have no problems closing a church that's doing nothing for God. Because this is not about church. This is about the kingdom. Shout amen. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. I'm just about ready to start the sermon. Boy, last week was so tough getting, keeping behind that pulpit, staying on that chair. I thank God for deliverance. The Bible says this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We got a little visual for you.
harvest field. When you look upon that field of corn, you see acre and acre. And there is Dan standing there with a, with a sigh. And the work is getting ready to be done. And there are people out there, I'm talking like every single stalk, every single ear represents you. It represents me. It represents your mother. It represents your father. It represents your babies. It represents your neighbor. It represents those people that you love and even the people that you hate. But when you grab a hold of that side and the weight And the weights. I don't care how much of a desire you have. You are going to have a hard time finishing the race. You are going to have a, different, a difficult time accomplishing what you're called to do. Oh, you think I'm faking. Come on up here, Dan. Put it over your neck, Dan. Okay, go to the back of the sanctuary. That's right. People can encourage you. People can strengthen you. People can speak to you. But until you desire, until you come to the place of recognizing that you have phenomenal purpose and that if you do not and I do not get the weight off us, that so easily besets us. That sin that so easily entangles us. Until we get them off us, we are not going to be able to do the job proper. I don't know how much those things weigh. They go over at least 100 pounds, right, between the two? How much? 100 pounds. 100 pounds of sand put around Dan's neck. Felt, felt good for me. Hallelujah. The definition of weight is this. Whatever is prominent, bulky, or a mass, hence a burden, a weight, or encumbrance. A weight doesn't even need to be a bad thing. I've got to wait. I jumped off that ATV, hit that nice soft dirt, heard my ankle go, my knee went the opposite direction.